You want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You can't handle the truth! Well, we're giving you the Michigan Sports Truth, the show that reveals facts, truth, research, and statistics, and never messes around. We lay down the entire truth about everything regarding your Detroit and Michigan sports teams, no matter if it's good or bad. No junk, no entertainment, no homerism, no coddling, no pop culture, no opinions, no shilling, and no fluff. Head over to our website at michigansportstruth.com, follow us on Twitter at Michigan underscore truth, and like our Facebook page, The Michigan Sports Truth. The hosts of the Michigan Sports Truth podcast do not take any suggestions or criticism from any member of its audience on how it should be run. It is up to the host to decide what they want to cover. They also do not intend to be any amount of popular in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Additionally, the views of the audience, right or wrong, do not reflect the actual truth revealed on this program. And this is episode, this is the post-game edition for Friday, May 18th, 2018. It is now Friday, now Saturday the 19th, but still, it's a post game for Friday, May 18th, because it's a late night game. Tigers, oh. That one is long gone. Yeah, the Tigers blow a 4 nothing lead and lose to the Seattle Mariners 5-4 in the second of four-game series at Safeco Field. They jumped out to an early 3 nothing lead, and they led 4 nothing after six innings of play. Michael Fulmer, dueling with King Felix Hernandez for the second time of the season. In other words, Fulmer versus King Felix 2 takes place. And Felix Hernandez uh, gets shelled in the first two or three innings or so. But um, let's get to Fulmer fast forward. Let's fast forward and get to Fulmer here. He doesn't walk anyone until the seventh inning when he loses his pitch command and walks two and then ends up giving up three earned runs total. And then the bullpen blows the rest of the lead. And the Mariners take a 5-4 lead. And it stays that way for the rest of the game. Tigers fall to 20 and 24. The Mariners improved to 25 and 19. But the way Rod Allen called the game, Rod Allen, just typical Rod Allen, just coddling Michael Fulmer. Rod Allen was saying Michael Fulmer was pitched way too good to not stay in the game. Just, he's just this typical slappy that Rod Allen is. He's just a classless slappy homer that's not even being professional. He's he's really overly one sided. Let me make this perfectly clear. Michael Fulmer just lost his pitch command. These things are going to happen time time and time again. That's part of the game. Michael Fulmer did not deserve that win. It it ended up costing the team the win. Rod Allen just simply does, does not care. He, he should have been fired like 12 hour 12 years ago. Or 13. But that's why I've expanded my hashtag boycott FSD movement to hashtag boycott Fox Sports Detroit. It's just a Fox Sports Detroit is unprofessional, unorganized, poorly produced, with stupid on air talents, stupid one side co conspirator, one. On air talents, one sided, s- 
stupid one side co conspirator on air talents that don't give a crap. That don't give any craps. <clears throat> well, we don't care about them either. So go screw yourselves, FSD. Bunch of bunch of prissies. Tigers fall to twenty and twenty four. The Mariners improved to twenty five and nineteen. The Twins and Indians both lose as well, so the AL Comedy Central Division standings stay pretty much the same. The Indians are one game below five hundred at twenty one and twenty two, and still in first place in that crappy division. The only f- thing we as fans sh- should care about is Chris Illich selling the team. The, the the Tigers have to lose more games and tank full throttle to make him lose even more money and force him to sell them. Same game, same thing goes for the Red Wings. We remember, and that's why this loss is valuable to us. We remember Jeff Moss's report on his outstanding and remarkable Detroit Sports Rag website back on March 8th of 2017, which is last year, that Chris Sillage is going to sell both the Tigers and the Red Wings due to tax issues. That and the fact that the Tigers and Red Wings are still losing more games, which is good in this case. So, we'll get to the Red Wings in a moment, but first, Left side line, three and he answers. Pistons next. The Pistons, according to Bleacher Report, via Rod Beard, of the Detroit News, the Pistons are likely to consider San Antonio Spurs female assistant coach Becky Hammond as their next head coach. Oh, man. We may experience some gender history, but as long as Becky Hammond can be a more developmental head coach than that now fired old oaf Stan Van Gundy can ever be in his career, then I'm fine with that. It may help the team improve, it may not. Who knows? Now, from what we understand, Becky Hammond may not have much or any head coaching experience in the National Basketball Association with an N- with any NBA team, but she's looking to improve uh, to upgrade her resume somehow, anyway. And Pistons forward Anthony Tolliver said, quote, I wouldn't have an issue with it at all. It would take some time. It would take some getting used to at first. But as long as she knows what she's doing, guys would respond just fine, unquote. Reggie Jackson, being the latest trade bait, says, quote, I'm not sure how others would receive it, and I understand it may be a transition that would have its own challenges, but I just want the best person for the job, unquote. Whatever you say, Reggie. So, those are just a couple player reactions. Becky Hammond Apologies for the um, misspelling on on my podcast. Um, Becky Hammond does have experience leading NBA players. The 40, she's 41 years old, a South Dakota native, hired by the San Antonio Spurs in 2014 as an assistant coach. She led the Spurs Las Vegas Summer League team to a championship in 2015. She doesn't want her gender to become the defining characteristic of her coaching career, though. She told Louisa, Louisa Thomas of the New Yorker, Quote, if you want to hire somebody who's qualified and will do a good job, then maybe you should consider me. My motives should my motives my motives shouldn't shouldn't be to change people's minds, she said. My job is to be the best I can be, and if that changes your mind, then great. But I can't be consumed with how you feel about me. Unquote. Becky Hammond is making a lot of sense.
So the second to last paragraph in this Bleacher Report article says, in Detroit, she'd inherit a team that's made the playoffs once in the past nine years, and the Pistons were swept by the Cleveland Cavaliers in that 2016 postseason appearance when SVG was around. It, it would represent a monumental challenge as Hammond broke through another glass ceiling, says the last paragraph. Buck Gino, one of my co-hosts, my co-host for the Week in Review edition, says Becky Hammond would be a fine coach. I don't know if she'll want to leave San Antonio to go to a developmental dumpster fire like Detroit, but that's just Stan Van Gundy turning the developmental program into a dumpster fire. But but continuing on, but it would be great. It would be a great business move to fill LCA because you can now market to other demographics that have disposable income. So, there's your information about Becky Hammond. Now for the Red Wings. According to Hockey Feed, the Red Wings are expected to cut ties with forward David Booth, defensive uh, defenseman Xavier Olette, and back, backup goaltender Jared Coro. That was a rumor from Hockey Feed about David Booth. The Hockey Feed says it seems likely that his NHL career may come to an end as a result of the Red Wings' decision to move on from him. This is from Craig Custins from The Athletic. From Hockey Feed via Craig Custance of The Athletic. Uh, for Xavier Olette, Custance says it, it's time for both sides to move one from one another and believes that ex that's exactly what will happen despite the fact that Xavier Oletta has one year, one more year left on his current NHL contract. The former second round pick in 2011 has never lived, has never lived up, has never lived up to the high hopes the Red Wings have had him. And it seems the relationship between the two sides may be beyond salvaging. The Red Wings always have high hopes in, in all the players that they already, they've already had for years. They just keep having high hopes. That's while while we realists don't, rightfully don't. And then Jared Coro, as far as he can, he's concerned. Craig Custins writes believe uh, he believes that well, uh, the Red Wings will find a veteran backup to replace him behind Red Wing starter Jimmy Howard. Frank Vagner only listed one example of a veteran backup. Kari Lettinen from the Dallas Stars. And Buck Gina would say, I would go further and say that they need a pair of new goalies in Grand Rapids with the Griffins. The guys they have in the system are ready for it. Get Fulcher into the pro system and put Machowski as the number one goaltender for the Griffins. So, this is this is all the information that makes sense from Frank Vagner and Buck Gino. You can follow them both on Twitter at Frank underscore Vagner and at Buck Gino three eyes for Roman numerals. Buck Gino the third. But since the Red Wings are rebuilding, if you want to if you want to call up another backup goaltender, just just for NHL experience, 
just because it's a rebuilding year, that, that, that that's fine. It, it We're not expecting the Red Wings to be better at all next year. Jeff Moss of the Detroit Sports Rag sees Ken Holland totally tanking next season. Which is good. That uh, that's another that's another thing that forces Chris Illich to sell the Red Wings along with the Tigers. So that probably has to work in that direction. So that's the post game. Tigers and Mariners game three of the four games set Saturday night at 9-10. Hopefully we'll have Lewis Tenor with his National Sports Report back with us. So until then, on behalf of him, I'm Taylor Phillips. Follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips. Like and share the Michigan Sports Truth Facebook page and follow it on Twitter at Michigan underscore truth. Make sure you share this episode. We need a wider audience. That's fans of sports. Also listen to us on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts via iTunes and spread the word. TTFN, ta-ta for now. The hosts of the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast do not take any suggestions or criticism from any member of its audience on how it should be run. It is up to the host to decide what they want to cover. They also do not intend to be any amount of popular in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Additionally, the views of the audience, right or wrong, do not reflect the actual truth revealed on this program.